Fishing, finally fishing. Now this video has been made possible by one of you viewers, regular viewers of the channel, and you sponsored sponsored us to come out fishing for a day. We have actually tried once before. Uh, I caught one spiky, spiky nose deal and one little catfish, and two didn't even get anything. So uh, we didn't, although we recorded it, we didn't po publish that. Also, we we tried river foraging as well for a day. Uh, we got three clams, so we didn't publish that either. So at the moment, um, one of our building chaps, well, the building work's finished for now. They're having a well-earned break. They're knackered. But the main guy, uh, we've hired him for the day uh, just so he can get some hammock time uh, and look after the place while we're fishing. The guy that sponsored this video he didn't want to shout out. In return, he got to name one of our little newborn goats. So a big thank you to you, buddy. And uh, hopefully we can do you proud. If we catch Chuffle, we're still going to publish the video. Toon hasn't waited for me, she's already down there. Now, we found this place yesterday. We, we drove the car up here in there to get the leukina for the goats. And when we looked down into the river, there was a couple of big fish. I say big fish, there was a lot of water moving for like bow waves, uh, bigger fish chasing smaller fish. So we thought, right, let's come back tomorrow before we get to uh, cut the food for the goats and uh, have a go for them. Where we saw the main big fish yesterday was here chasing small stuff over a shallow rocky area and then further down there. But where it looks really good, now whether it's going to be accessible or not I don't know. I think the trickiest bit is going to be getting down there. I think once we're down there it might be all right if you can see there's a like a rock there and this this vegetation in the river there that's really spiky stuff. And there were fish jumping in there yesterday. So I presume that's catfish. They like it all snaggy and uh, stuff that's overhanging. So a lot of that grass is, is just on the surface. So there should be fish underneath there. That side looks brilliant. Now, this river has been electric shocked to death. Uh, but this is deep. So is there another bit there and another bit up there. So hopefully a lot of fish... Of, uh, look for some sanctuary down here. I can just see some water moving there. So there's fish underneath here. Whether we can get them down or not, whether we can get them to feed or not is another thing, but we'll give it a go. Let's try and get down there without breaking my neck. Uh, Toon's all excited. She's just seen a load of clam shells, which means the birds have been feeding on uh, hoy garb, we call them. They're like a freshwater mussel. So even if the fishing's rubbish, we're going to have a look for. We're going to have a, a rootle around the, the riverbed at some point today, try and get some clams. And we've also brought the shrimp pot with us, so we'll put them in there. Bait today is shrimp and liver. We couldn't get hold of any worms. Check this out for a location. One of these commercial fishery rubbish locations for, for us. Proper Mr. Crabtree swim this is. Her tune's just uh, not convinced that shrimp will be good today. She's just going to put some liver on the hook. There's some small fish coming up down there. Oh, I've just seen a couple of nice fish to celebrate today. I've created a new rod. This is from my special Winkle Picker range. And I've sacrificed a little bit of girth for extra length. Uh, it's not particularly strong, but there's no huge fish in here. You could add all something up to about a kg, I suppose. Wouldn't you know it, guys? England has raced into an early lead. Uh, it's a huge specimen. Uh, this little catfish is called Baggy Yang. And uh, they don't grow much bigger than that, probably about double the size. Very, very spiky on the dorsal fin and the side side fins there. So uh, they're good eating though, Toon doesn't eat them, but I do. Um, 
sun dried in salt and fried up crispy, they're good. Uh, we won't be putting those in the lake. I'd had a couple of bites before that, uh, but I missed them because I was, I was off me rock trying to get Toon's handbag for her. Keep fishing. Toon's caught half a fish. Put <laughs> that near the camera. <laughs> Not even fat, just a head. <laughs> Same <laughs> alpha dog, innit? They all count. Turtles will eat them as well. Then feed you better than feed turtle up. I don't know, you clean the stomach, there's nothing there. Oh, super deep bit out there, like a shell. Be a monster in there. Now we have run out of suntan lotion. It's all right for two and she just goes black, but I go pink like a lobster. You got a bite? Bite, 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 bite. Damn me. They that, scare you. That could have been dinner. Sit. You keep getting bites like that, I'm going to use that smelly liver as well. <laughs> what can happen sometimes, you get lots and lots of little silverfish moving and as soon as your bait touches the water, it's like a little shoal of piranha grabbing them. If you can get through them, yeah, they've just, just mugged Toon's hook. Fucking steal my bait. Yeah, if you can get through them without them stealing your bait, then you should get the catfish on the bottom. Another one of the same. It's not what we're really after, but quite often you start off catching these and then the, the other ones start to move in on the food. The only thing with gung, my, my bites are a bit slower than Toon's because the shrimp doesn't really smell of anything because they're fresh shrimp. We put them on live. I've been using half shrimp, so pretty much dead straight away. Fish not get nose. They not smell anything. Toon says fish haven't got noses. They can't smell anything, but they definitely go for a liver straight away. Yeah, because they drop in the water, they can feel it. Well, I dropped mine in the water and I can feel it. Don't die one. I keep fishing. Stop bloody blind, you. Anyway, two one. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, late. <laughs> Just smack the camera with the hook and then splash my face. Good shot, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> uh, the lens is dirty, but I've got no time to clean it now. Here we go. Oh, oh late. I know, I'm just so excited. This way. Oh, it's gone straight away, look. Like Can't wait, you're gonna steal my shrimp. Oh. Your bait's giant, missus. <laughs> you trying to catch barracuda? Oh, oh come on. See, I tell you. Oh, lovely wind. Know what the fuck they're different anyway, isn't it? Oh, bugger! The best bite so far. This time. Bob Ned wouldn't have missed that. Go on, go on, go on. Not yet. Up to me. It's my Not bloody yet. rod, isn't it? I strike when I want. Yeah. Yeah. It's only a small one pecking it anyway. And check out the whiskers on this fella though. They're longer than he is. <laughs> Just lost a big one guys. Fuck oh, yeah. <laughs> he was on for quite a while. Didn't see him but the bubbles were coming up off the floor at the river. Okay. Your fault. <laughs> Arse. Right, keep going. Typical, isn't it? Oh, he's just come up. He's just... Oh, dear. The nice size. I couldn't get it off the bottom. It just kited from where I are now, right to the side of me, around here. And as I just started to pull it up, it disappeared, the bugger. 
Uh, that's probably spooked the smaller ones for a little while. He's laughing at me now. Stole me bloody half a gung as well. Oh, Tune's, Tune's still getting the bites. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> but you got a sock on there. <laughs> it's like it's like a bloody condom on there. <laughs> To me, when you very brave, they put the let the big one away. I didn't let it go. Nearly broke my new rod. Whew, that liver stinks, miss, isn't it? Probably what why. Probably why you're getting a lot of bites. I got no nod. You can't smell it. You get bite. It's not easy to fish one-handed. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to put the camera down again and look another big one. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Snagged you. So where we're fishing, you can see these little branches coming up, these little trees. Yeah, that's where the fish like to be, around the bottom of there. Team bent her up. She got a fish and it took her in the snag. You see what's happening in here, guys? It's uh, poaching, toon style. Because I've been getting the better bites, but I've got to wait a little bit longer for them. Now, toons floats right in front of me. Can't even get in properly. Oh, bloody blaller. you got the whole bloody river to fish and I now your floats in front of go. me. How am I supposed to put mine in properly? You put everywhere you want, or oh, liver there. Cousin, you get bite. See? Well, your float was in the way. I couldn't strike properly, could I? <laughs> Outrageous fishing. You're just so exciting trying to get fish and uh, hope for the camera. Can you just relax? I can relax if you just fish in front of you. I'm gonna go in the water in a minute, I Ow! What, try to tickle them? Uh, get my dinner. Be careful, missus. Slippy rocks. Well, we're about an hour into it at the moment, and I think we've got seven, all told. There's a lot of little silverfish showing now, and they're being a bit of a pain in the arse. And we have seen just behind the camera where it's shallow, something bigger chasing them, and there's been a few splashes around where predatory fish are feeding on these small silver stuff. But at the moment, we can't hook a silverfish to use as bait, and um, apart from that bigger that were hooked early on in the first 20 minutes or so, uh, it's a bit of a struggle. I do eat those little catfish, but I prefer to catch, you know, nice wild fish to, to put in the lake. Even if we're not going to eat them, then they're still used to go in the lake. But we won't be putting these in the lake, these little meow catfish, because they only grow to about 50 grams anyway, so there's no point. And also, if you, you're trying to catch, um, like freshwater clams and mussels in the lake then uh, you don't want to be standing on one of those catfish their dorsal fins will go straight into the middle of your foot so uh, we'll try it a little bit longer here i think toon's just about to launch herself in the into the river and look for a few clams if she if she finds quite a few then we'll forget the fishing and <laughs> we'll start foraging i'm going to move a little bit further down the river i'll take the rod and uh, we bucket a bait toon's busy looking for shellfish so far so rubbish uh, the, as you say in the bottom of the rivers it's, it's most, mostly sand and rocks what you're looking for really is um, mostly mud with a little bit of sand and then they say they tend to congregate around there so she'll keep looking and hopefully find this the, the soil that's just about the right right sort of thing for, for finding them and uh, hopefully I'll locate the fish further down the river We'll drop a line here, give it a go. Different location. 
Same outcome. The river's absolutely alive with these little things. Bit of a pain in the ass, really, but we'll keep going, see if we can get through them. Just got snagged a minute ago and uh, I lost my bait. So I was just putting a new bit of shrimp on the hook behind the camera, just where I've walked through a minute ago, coming here. Uh, there was a huge splash. I think it's a snakehead. Uh, so I'm going to try and creep across the river this side and then work my way back up there and then throw across to where I saw saw it come up. It was big, very, very big. So, uh, whether he's going to take shrimp or not, I don't know, but we'll give it a go, eh? Oh, there was something small pulling on that. Well, that's been bloody frustrating, that has. I've given it about half an hour here. And it's my own fault for not catching them, really. There's some several, um, at least five or six occasions of big fish chasing small fish in here. And you know, it took a little while for them to to turn up, but sitting quiet, and they, they, they showed. Uh, and then they got snagged twice, and that's a walk across. That's pretty much buggered it. It's very shallow. It's not even to my knee, that. Uh, but I was starting to get bite. I got another little catfish, but I was hoping to get a big one, but I think I've screwed it up. So I'm going to try down here off the rocks here. There's been a few big fish jumping here that's toon seen. So I'll give it a go there. Got to get something decent. It's coming up to two o'clock now in the afternoon and the the fishing has slowed right now not that it's been electric at any point of the day anyway but you're getting very very small bites i wouldn't even class them as a proper bite anymore and uh it seems like the the river's pretty much shutting down there's not as many big ones jumping around now so soon have i soon and i have had a bit of a chat um why we're not actually hooking into the big ones apart from that big one early on um, we think it's the big catfish and Bichon, the, the snakehead. And they're chasing the small fish or bugs, that sort of thing. So what we're thinking that we might do, if we can catch some small frogs tonight around our lake, is maybe come here um, tomorrow night or the night after and set up camp just behind me. We've got like a little sandy beach. I don't know if you can see that there or just over the over the side there where we started off um, we can make camp there and we can do our usual uh, night fishing with standing hooks and like dangle the frogs just touching the water because all around here you, you can actually get into the the edge of the river bank now the water's quite low if we don't do it in the next couple of days the water's dropping quite quickly and this will all get electric shocked again if it might even get an electric shot this afternoon or tonight, I don't know. But there's certainly a lot, a lot of fish in here. I haven't seen so many big fish in here for for quite a few years. And uh, I've, I've known this river for nearly 15 years. So we're chomping at the bit to, to get stuck into those big fish. But it will be quite scary. Now, we did do a video previously, night fishing on this river when it was flooded. If you just go pan the camera around so that's where we started off this morning um, when we were fishing before at night time we were dangling hooks not far off there probably about a, a foot down the bank not not here this was a, a long 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 way uh, about a mile down there and to the left so you can see how much it's dropped and it is still dropping a lot it's even dropped a bit while while we've been here so the electric shock boys and throwing net boys um will be racing to get down here i dare say certainly if they saw all these the flood water fishing was quite scary but this will be scary in another way in as much that we'll have to get in the water at night time putting the hooks all the way along there all along this beach here the far side so it'll mean you will have to 
keep going across the river to keep baiting your hooks because you get through a fair if there's a lot of fish about which there is you get through a lot of bait and you've got to keep on replenishing your hooks with fresh frogs yeah we'd have to man up a bit uh, some of it's quite deep it's deeper than my wellies otherwise i'd be all right toon's got some waders so she's okay whatever um but i don't know might just have to do it i quite fancy catching some big fish out the river not i've not done that for ages we're quite gutted that our, our first sponsor video we haven't done very well but you know that famous phrase that's that's fishing for you uh, if it was really easy everyone would be doing it and filling up the freezer wouldn't they but it's hard certainly around here as well so so you, you never you, you, you nearly nearly never see big fish in this river anymore it's a crying shame that's um it's normally when uh, you get some heavy rains and they open the, the dam and uh, it washes some some big fish down here but they've they've been held where where you're not allowed to fish the at least they've had a chance to grow since we started the farm it's it's been quite different when we get to go fishing now i mean we really enjoy it just as much as we used to but now when say you don't get a bite for an hour or so before we just you just keep moving and moving until you find the fish now it's just like oh there's an hour and a half two hours we should be back at the farm doing this doing that and you do feel a little bit guilty just sitting there was oh, just a fish come up sometimes you feel a bit guilty sitting not being productive well I, I do sometimes it seems ages since i've had a a quiet sit down that's probably why um since i had enough she's She's scaled the, the side of the riverbank and she's cutting the uh, the leukina for the goats later on. So when we go back to the house on Ben-Hur, we'll uh, sort out the, the fish. I think we've got about a dozen. So it's a, it's a feed for me <laughs> and the turtles. And uh, the, the crayfish can have the internals. And then we'll come back with the car a little bit later. We normally do that about half three, four o'clock. By which time the goats will be ready for their their late afternoon treat i tell you what we didn't have to go back and do the goats and we had a, a nice comfy mat and a cool box full of beer <laughs> we would be on this little beach behind us here getting tanked up i don't know we'd scale back up the side of the river bank but yeah missing a beer today still not a bad way to unwind is it not that i found that as wound up but it's beautiful sometimes we forget or I, I'm guilty of forgetting how fortunate we are to be in a place like this of course it's not perfect like everywhere else but you know there's a lot of litter and stuff and poaching that goes on sometimes and electric shocking which I hate chemical use around here is rife but um, yeah on the whole it's Oh, yeah. very peaceful place to live it's a shame we couldn't get any freshwater clams we thought we might get some here but we've, ne we've never been down this far on the on the river before to fish and uh y y you never know till you till you get in and you you feel what the bottom of the riverbed's like it's just not right there's big boulders and it's just sort of like a it's mostly sandy sandy silt so it's not quite right for for what the shellfish like round here the, the clams and mussels are getting quite thin on the ground it has to be said round here and uh, we had a couple of bumper foraging sessions last year uh, but that's before the really big drought and since that they haven't really bounced back so thank goodness all the ones that we used to collect that were too small or we just had too many to to eat in time some we used to sell um, but we started putting them in the lake and all our ponds and yeah they've started reproducing in there and growing bigger and we should be able to get our own our own shellfish whatever happens um out here which is good because we used to collect them from a, a pond next door to us on the on the adjacent farm and uh, of course then you you're concerned about um chemicals going in there and that sort of stuff but yeah None of that garbage will be going into our lake, so uh, our shellfish should be nice and nice and healthy. 
I put a whole shrimp on for the last half hour, still alive, thinking, well, even if I, I get a big one, take it, and it, it doesn't look it, at least, you know, it will show that they do want the live food, but I'm pretty sure they do anyway. But they're not even having that. Funny buggers today. Some of you might be thinking, well, why aren't you using ground bait or loose feed? Well, I suppose you could liquidise your shrimp, but you need a lot of shrimp. Yeah, ground baiting doesn't seem to work on, on the majority of these little wild rivers around here. Uh, what they normally do is, is just get the end of your pole and just splash splash the surface of the water, a bit of commotion. Back in the UK, you, well, common thoughts is that it scares the fish off. Uh, but around here, it definitely, definitely works a lot of the places. But the big rivers that we used to fish when we had time, when we had a life, uh, yeah, we used to... Got a big bucket of ground bait, swim feeder, and and uh, haul the stuff in. That, but that was for like shoals of big fish. Maybe one day we'll we'll get back to Tamakur. It's the Ping River. It's a very very good river, but uh, it's 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 huge and it's and it's quite it's quite wild. You know, you have to you have to wait till the the water levels dropped a lot, uh, and that's that's hooked up to a big dam, I believe. And there's normally a really good, good strong pull on it, so uh, you you almost need like sea fishing gear to fish it. I brought a little bit of that stuff out with me, but a lot of the stuff out here just isn't isn't up to the job. So, Toon likes fishing the pole, which um you know you, if it's a raging torrent, you got no chance. But I like to go back there because you get some jungle perch. Around here we only have the climbing perch, which are quite small, but the jungle perch grow quite big. And uh, they're a handsome fish. We'll like a few of those in the lake. They are predatory fish, but we've got so many fish in the lake now. It'd probably do as good to have a few more different types of predatory species in there just to help maintain the balance of, of healthy fish in there and not too many fish that are just uh, eating all the food that we're putting in all the time. Not that we're buying any. Um, it's all food that we, we collect for free from the, the guy on the market that's in our local village. So yeah, I'd like to go back and um, see if we could catch a few of those and bring them back for the lake. There's a few other species as well, which like a like a bream. Um, they would do quite well in the lake, I'm sure. My biggest fish that I had out in the river was um, uh, a black-eared doggy in catfish. <laughs> so yeah, some of that is, I've never ever seen them even in the market for sale. Those I had to Google it as well to try and find out what it was. Yeah, hopefully we'll get back there one day. So if you fancy sponsoring us <laughs> for a trip there, um, that would have to be going early doors. As soon as the, the goats are sorted in the morning, we wouldn't be coming back till late afternoon, early evening. So that would be a, that's a full day of that is. But yeah, or if there's something else you want us to do, you know, if there's something that you've seen previously, you're like, oh, that'd be good if you could do another one of those videos. Um, if it means us leaving the farm and you want to sponsor us, then just let us know, just send us an email. Make sure it's the one that's um, legal 71 gmail.com. I'll leave a link in the description below. And uh, yeah, fire us an email over and um, ask us what you, what you fancy as recording. And we'll see if we, we can, we'll see if we can do it or not. I'm going to go and help the missus. She's uh, chopping and I need to pile it all up into one place so we can come back with a car in a few hours and get all the goat food all right guys thanks for watching and uh thank you mr sponsor mm -hmm.